Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So recently I reported on a rumor, just to be clear, is a rumor that iPhones in the future that use USB-C will have data transfer in charging speed limits if that cable is not MFI certified. So for those of you who are not aware of this entire situation, I went over it in this video, I'll link it down below. The TLDR is Apple has a lightning port and if you wanna make a cable that complies with Apple's standards and all that other junk, you have to give them money as this is a considerable source of revenue for Apple that they get money every time somebody is making a cable that is certified to work with an iPhone. Now, the EU really just kind of shoved a stick into the spokes of Apple's profit machine here by saying that phones that are sold in the EU have to use USB-C. USB-C is an open standard, so you're not going to be able to charge a troll toll. And they are seemingly, again, this is a rumor, trying to potentially have a troll toll where the device won't be able to charge at the full speed if the cable is not certified, which you could because there are bad cables out there and phones are getting faster and you have phones that are gonna be charging at one or 200 watts into the future, you can make an argument that some USB-C cables may not be safe for that. What you cannot make a safety argument for is the data transfer speed. The data transfer speed between the device and the computer being capped at USB 2 transfer speeds has nothing to do with safety or security everything to do with being shameless money grab. Now, there is an article that came out recently that a lot of people have been linking me to. It says, Apple breaking the law made for iPhone USB-C rumored lockdown could be illegal under new EU rules. Could Apple's rumored plan to introduce the made for iPhone program on USB-C iPhones be illegal under the new EU rules? This comes from Laptop Magazine. As you can probably guess from the headline, the answer based on my interpretation is yes. It all started when I wrote about Apple completely missing the point of adopting an open standard like USB-C. To be clear, they did not miss the point. This is malicious compliance. They, if they were to be doing this, this would be so they could collect money. They fully understand the point of USB-C is A, to make life easy on their customers and B, to avoid Apple's troll toll. They don't care about making life easier for their customers, and they most certainly are not going to try to get around the troll toll. A leaker suggested that the company was looking to implement a verification chip that would artificially restrict charging in data speeds of any USB-C accessory from a company that isn't part of its certification program. But here's the thing. Once I published this story, a few people reached out to me with a recommendation to reread and reinterpret the wording of the EU research dossier. And well, it's very explicit what you can and can't do with the USB-C port in your phone. No restrictions allowed. So time for me to get my Phoenix right on. If it pleases the court, I would like to present my evidence and object for made for iPhone restrictions on the USB-C port. The passages I'm referring to to discuss legislation related to the charging speed will start on page five of the dossier, specifically point six. Over here, the minimum power should express the sum of the power required by the radio equipment to maintain operation, the minimum power required by its battery start charging. The maximum power should express the sum of the power required by the radio equipment to maintain operation and the power required to achieve the maximum charging speed. To be clear, from the EU's directive, the power required to achieve the maximum charging speed. There's no misinterpreting that. That means no troll toll for you. Next up, page 29 of the dossier, which goes in on the details about the charging capabilities at the maximum charging speed expressed in watts. The charger shall be between minimum X watts required by the radio equipment and max watts required in order to achieve the maximum charging speed. The number of watts shall respectively express the minimum power required by the radio equipment and the maximum power required by the radio equipment to achieve the maximum charging speed. Following this, we move over to the press release that you created about the vote passing on this law. The charging port and fast charging technology will be harmonized. First, USB-C will be the common port. This will allow consumers to charge the devices with the same USB-C charger regardless of the device brand. At the same time, harmonizing fast charging technology will help prevent that different producers unjustifiably limit the charging speed and will help to ensure that charging speed is the same when using any compatible charger for a device. These rules will now apply to a range of electronic devices mentioned above. More devices may be included in the future following regular assessment of the market by the commission. And finally, we head over to the EU directive document itself. It requires that mobile phones and the similar radio devices that they are capable to be recharged via wired charging, are equipped with the USB-C type receptacle, and if they require charging at voltages higher than 5 volts or currents higher than 3 amps or powers at higher than 50 watts, incorporate the USB power delivery charging communication protocol. Now, again, the one part where the EU did kind of F up is in this entire document, as pointed out by this article in Laptop Mag, that there's nothing about data transfer speeds. It looks like this is a bit of an oversight in the EU directive, which could potentially be exploited by a company who may want to make its own certified line of accessories perform better. True. If Apple wants to say that a non-MFI certified accessory only transfers data at a rate of one megabyte per second, they can technically do that. It doesn't say anything there. It says USB-C and it says rules for power delivery. It does not say anything about data. So there's still potential 
for a troll toll there that many users may wind up paying. The crackdown is on companies that unjustifiably limit charging speeds. The press release and directive make this clear, mentioning how the speed should be the same with any compatible charger and going as far as to require the USB power delivery charging communication protocol on phones that require charging powers higher than 15 watts. Apple could get around it, but it would be a bad faith move. Reread what I just mentioned in the above bullet point. The phrase compatible charger could be interpreted openly as any USB-C power breaking cable, or it could be viewed as slightly narrower lens of this made for iPhone program. Then there's the minimum wattage rule. Currently, the iPhone 14 lineup supports up to 27 watt charging speeds. Apple could be incredibly cynical about this and bring charging speeds down to just below 15 watts. But as I said, this would be an ex transparent, exploitative cash grab. And at the end of the day, it's not about whether it is a transparent, exploitative cash grab because that's 90% of Apple's business model. What it is about is whether or not they can actually legally get away with it. And there is the chance that they may be able to make it only work at 15 watts, even if it is a compatible charger. And there is also a substantial chance, if this passes, of artificially limiting device speed. Now again, I will admit, I will admit that given the fact that we, phones are going to be charging faster and faster and faster, the technology is evolving and getting more and more complex with time, that if you buy a $1 bottom of the barrel garbage USB PC power cable, it might be a bad idea to try and shove 100 or 150 watts through that thing into the future. I give you that. Data speed, though. The way to genuinely see if this just comes out as an exploitative cash grab and that is utter, completely and utterly shameless or only partially shameless has to do with data speed. If they say we are going to restrict data speeds to a like USB 2 or USB 1 like interface, that's a piece of crap move to do, and it is purely about collecting money. I'm very curious to see how Apple will actually move forward with this, because, again, I would expect that if the made-for-iPhone program just gets tossed in the dumps, that Apple stock would go down, because this is a giant portion of revenue for Apple. When you look at this, like, again, it's hard for me to imagine that this stays... Honestly, it's hard for me to imagine this stays where it is, period, because, again, the, wor the world is crazy nowadays when it comes to valuations. But, like... It's hard for me to imagine that this doesn't go down just a little bit if they are no longer able to make a troll toll on chargers and charge cables because they are forced to use an open standard for the EU. It's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Even those of you who are going to defend this, because you'll see in the comments, there'll, there'll be somebody who defends this. Every time, mark my words, you think they don't exist, but I assure you they do. Bye now.